Welcome back everyone, I'm Butterfix and today we're going to be taking a look at this DualSense controller. A customer sent this to me because the R2 kept making a ticking noise in game and he wanted to have that fixed. Now my first instinct was maybe it's something with the adaptive triggers system that tends to break or the gear tends to disform or deform I mean. And when I got it, the first thing I noticed is there's like a rattle inside the controller, so there's something definitely broken. I'll hold it up to the microphone so you can also hear it. So it is very audible. It's either very hard plastic or something metal. And my second thought was, okay, maybe the springs have detached from its location. But if I hold it just right, you can see that it's shining right underneath the R2, right here. And that is the spring. So the spring is fine and it actually bounces back okay. How about the left one? Same thing. So there's something else wrong with this and I want to make a video about this. And a big shout out to Matthias M74 because he worked so much on the DualShock calibration GUI or rather DualShock tools rather because this website can now be used for more than just calibration. So this is a version 2.18, it's a beta version. And this is not a live version, it's on a separate link that he sent in Discord. So this is what I like about the website. DualShock tools is an open source which means that everyone can access the source code and they can contribute for free. And Matthias has been working, I believe like for the last two or three months or something to, for example, improve the fine tuning menu or add the 10X zoom that I made a video about earlier. And now he's also included this quick testing. Now the Discord server where this message was sent is also public and you can join it right here. It's in the bottom of this website. I will also put a link in it in the description. And if you want to join, you can help test newer versions. You can contribute if you're a programmer or you can help translate the website because there are also a lot of translations. And if you want to help translate it to your own website, you can do that there as well. So any help is very much appreciated. It means a lot to me that this website is open sourced because it just helped so many people to fix their own controllers. And it kind of motivated the companies that make like Hall Effect and TMR joysticks to make them. Because it was right after that this website was launched that TMR joysticks were a thing. And then Hall Effect joysticks were also a lot more expanded on for DualShock 4 and uh, uh, DualSense, which Ultimately, this is better for the consumer and having this website available like this, just out in the public, it's, I, I don't take it for granted. It's a very good thing and huge shout out to the creator of this website, The Owl, and uh, Matthias M74 for the latest changes, including this beta, which it may not look like this in the full release, but it's just, I'm very grateful for it. Thank you. It's just amazing because these people, they don't ask anything in return. They, they have donation links, which I will also put in the description if you want to support them. But they do it for fun, basically, because they want to help people, right? And I think that's a very good mindset for them to have. And I hope that it inspires other people as well to contribute to this website because it is such a big deal. And I think people are sometimes taking it for granted. So that's it about my rant. Let's get into fixing this controller. This lets you test like several different things, such as the USB connector, the speaker, adaptive triggers even, or the lights, as you can see here. And it just cycles through red and green and blue and the player LEDs, even the mic mute button. And then you can check on the website whether it passes or not. Now I'm more interested in the adaptive triggers because now the triggers are giving feedback. But if you look at the right one, there's hardly any feedback. I think you can even hear it. Get out of focus. 
Now if we red one. So there's definitely something wrong with the adaptive triggers. It's not the springs because they seem to be intact. Let's open it up and see if we can fix it. I've done several dual sense disassemblies already, so I'm not gonna explain too much on the steps I take. If you want to see more about that, you can look at the other videos. Those are more joysticks related, like the soldering, for example, but they do show how to take these apart, like pretty easily. So there are just these four screws. Oh, it's already. <laughs> There was already a piece falling out of it. But that's part of the rattling that I heard. Alright, the back shell, it doesn't look too broken. It's probably only these clips missing, which I just took off. That always happens when you disassemble the controller. And there's not really something you can do about that. Now, you want to make sure that when you take out the battery, you grab onto the connector of the battery and not to the part that is soldered to the motherboard. You don't want to grab on this, otherwise you're going to remove that part. Let's see, it's already two pieces. Is that it? See, the springs are fine, right there, and right there. But I don't know what it could be then. Like, where do those, where do those pieces come from? All right, let's see. No, another one. I don't think anything on the, on the shell broke. I think I'm going to have to go deeper in the trigger assembly. Now, the BDM030, which is the third version of the DualSense, it's the easiest to take apart, in my opinion, because you can just do this. Uh, this also goes out, so I do need a pair of tweezers. Whereas with the later revisions, it's a lot harder to take out the adaptive trigger system and I believe this white plastic can also just there we go <laughs> so it all can be removed quite easily now we gotta invest every bit of plastic and already I can see that there is a tooth missing right here so this part has to be replaced. That could already be it, like that's the only thing broken. And as you can see right here, might have to uh, get the exposure a bit different. Well, it's very hard to see. You can see this middle pin, that's broken. So both of these have to be replaced. It's probably where these two plastics come from, but I have a third. So where does the other one come from? Maybe there are two teeth on this broken. But I need to find where it comes from because I might need to replace another piece. How about the button? That seems okay. And I hope the frame isn't broken. This plastic is part of the entire frame. So if this is broken, I have to replace everything. I'll get some replacement parts for these and then we can fix this up right away. Right, so here is the old piece of plastic and this is how it is supposed to look like. 
you can see a big difference. Now this also shows where the third piece of plastic came from. Because not only is there one missing here, there's also one missing in the corner right here. Because there are four teeth here, but there are six over here. So this can go to the trash and I can put a new one in. So let's just put this back inside like this. It has to click in place. You'll hear it, you'll feel it as though, then it's stuck in there. Now for trigger. I think the frame is a bit bent because it's hard to put this piece back inside. Because if this doesn't move freely, that might still be an issue. And then next is the pin. You can just stick that right through there. Then next uh, is this gear right here. It only fits in one way and it's a bit tricky. So what I should have done is first remove it, then put it in. And at some point it will just slide in. You can see if these gears move and that's when you know you have it in the right place. And now just snap it back in. Now this part's also very important and easy to mess up. I'll take uh, this gear as an example. So the gears on this side go all the way around, right? It's symmetrical. But there's also this smaller gear, which has teeth on one side, but on the other side it's flat. So this only fits in one way. And if you put it in incorrectly, well, you're going to run into issues. You're going to get to the last teeth before you see the flat part. You're going to put this in with the uh, teeth facing that way. And there's this part which does not have teeth and that faces the trigger. You want to make sure that this last teeth, which unironically I'm pointing to with a toothpick, this one, it corresponds to the last hole on the other piece of plastic, right, right there. So now it moves freely and if you push it back all the way, you can see that each teeth corresponds to each hole on the other side because now this is the flat piece and the last tooth fits in the last hole. Now this is what happens if you don't have it in the right place. So let's say I put it in like this, right? Now the trigger will move because there are teeth over here, but there is no more space. This is now the flat side, which is why you have to lift it back up. You have to move it slightly and not let it drop out like this. Nope, that's still not, this is still not correct. You see this last tooth, it is touching the flat part. So you gotta lift this back up and you gotta move it one step to the right. Just like that. Just like this. And now it's fine again. It has the full range of motion because it corresponds to every tooth and every hole. Like that. Now I don't know why they went with this design because why not put teeth on this side? I don't see what's stopping them from doing that. It's kind of weird, in my opinion. But that's the way it is, and that's the way that we have to work with it. Now this piece of plastic, since there were only three pieces broken, and I don't see any obvious defects here, 
Here you want to make sure the screw holes line up. But first there is this piece which has to go over the pin. The pin sticks out a little bit. So you stick it over the pin and then you can just kind of press it down. Now this is also stuck in place. And then we can put the screws back in. The first three screws are these. Well, this de depends on your version of the DualSense. On the BDM030, you first have to do these three, and then this one holds the front shell as well. So this one goes right here. But before I'm gonna put the front shell on, I'm gonna give this controller a good cleaning. So I'm going to take everything out. I'm gonna clean it. I'm gonna skip until I'm done with that. And then I'll be back in a minute. All right, the controller is now back together. Got my cat here, so let's go test it. Okay, so again with the website in front of me, we can now do the quick test, adaptive triggers. And now we can see left one works as intended. And the right one works as well. There's no ticking noise, no rattle. Everything works. So this control is fixed. Huge thanks to Matthias again for making this. It's a blessing. Thank you. And with that, that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something and I'll see you next time.